on how to um, access the information in Elevation. Many of you may already know that um, you'll you can use your um, BCS email to log in and you'll have a password. And once you get in there, the first thing you'll see is this dashboard. And this first box will show your EL students that are listed under your name through PowerSchool. The second box are monitored students, and those are students that have exited the program, but we're still required to monitor to ensure that they have not, or that they're still successful, um, even though they're no longer an L. So you can click on this, um, Word monitored students, but for now we're just going to go over here to the L students and I'm going to click on that and for you it will pull up all of your L's in your classes. Uh, let's just click on a sample here. And the first thing you'll see is the demographic page, which provides the most information um, and the things that are they're required by federal law. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. Um, but the first thing that we really need to know is, are those access scores, right? Where are they in their language proficiency level? And that is on a scale of one to six. Um, gives you some insight, um, all their testing history. And I like to use this just to kind of scroll down and see when did they first um, place or yeah, get screened for the program. So this student, for example, was in 2019. So that would tell me, you know, they're a 11th grader. 2019, they're, they're still kind of a newcomer, especially during these times. Um, you will also go down here and then those access scores determine the can-do descriptors, which really then hones in on what we can expect to see them do and produce as far as language in the classroom. And we do know they're here in this, this category or this column under current descriptors. But of course, by second semester um, or third quarter, we want them to start moving into the successive descriptors and, you know, where are they, where do we want them to um, get to by the end of the year. So that's just that growth area. Um, so these are great uh, areas to go and look, for example, speaking. Um, we know that they can ask what questions, you know, who, what, when, where, why, how. Um, so that would be a great target is maybe ask them just those simple questions and with simple sentence responses and then, you know, some writing ideas of what they can do with supports like a graphic organizer down here. So that then determines their modifications. What are the things that the teacher has selected for them to have in the classroom? Um, to be successful. And so a lot of those just transfer right over. There's the graphic organizer, provide outlines of text, modified assignments, meaning, you know, just what they're going to produce to show that they've learned that standard is going to be modified. The standard would still stay the same. Um, and then here, we're going to then also know if there's a, a EOC or state exam or teacher made exam, any of those modifications will then be listed in here as well. So all of this, like, as I mentioned, we have to keep track of because it is federal law. We have to yearly screen these students with, um, on the access, we use the access test to do that. And then that, as I mentioned, determine those can-do descriptors. What can we expect from those students as far as their level of language? English language, and then what classroom modifications have been put in place based on those can-dos and those access scores. And again, this is all based on Lau versus Nichols, um, which was um, federal law from 1974. And the, the highlight of this is in the red here, a student cannot fail an assignment and or a class if there is no evidence of the classroom modifications being provided appropriately and consistently. So going back to this, that is the end of the uh, demographics or data component of elevation. But what I'd also like to show you now is um, the strategies. And this has been updated in the last couple of months, so it may look a little different if you're used to going in here. But what I want to show you as far as PD opportunities would be in this first new drop down box, which is modules. And in here, um, 
they are, I think there's around 16 and I know it's growing. So this is something to think about in the future. I think they were saying over the summer of 2022, they're hoping to get at least, I think, gosh, 20 more logged in. in. So always check back and see if there's something new that might be applicable for your situation and your students. But what I'd like to show you for um, the time we're in now and maybe something to support your learning now that might guide you into next year is down here at the bottom, there's some really, some really timely anyway, there's the introduction to newcomers, introduction to multilingual learners. If you've never, if you don't know anything about, you know, uh, language learners, this might be a good place to start. But I also recently did um, this one myself is the introduction to students with interrupted formal education. We are seeing more and more of these students coming in. So I thought I'm going to, I'm going to see what they offer. These are all one hour PD um, sessions that you do on your own. And I, like I said, I did this one and it was very user friendly. It's just click, click. It reminded me a little bit of a, I think it was not a Canvas course or I guess it was a Canvas course anyway. Um, but you can go through here, read the directions, look at what the outcomes are. And then there's videos. And then as you scroll through here, it will guide you to go back and look at your data and see, you know, where, where do your students fall? And then it also takes you to a place where you start to um, use the different strategies that, that Elevation has. So for example, this one has virtual field trip. You could tour that and see, you know, is that something I might want to use in my classroom or my life map here or sentence scramble. So you can just click on any one of the, the available strategies and then read through it, you know, learn a little bit about it, and then apply it. And, excuse me, I actually have this set in Spanish, so we're going to go back to English. Um, and that will give you just a little bit of information on that uh, strategy. And again, your abouts, your how-tos, and some examples of how to change it um, to grade levels and specific content areas. You'll get downloadables and printable documents that you can, I like the word docs because I can modify those and adapt those for my needs. And then over to the right, you'll get your students broken down into the support level categories for high support, which would be your newcomers level one and two, your moderate level three and writing level fours and uh, plus. So again, that's on a scale of one to six. And what this really provides is not only is this sentence scramble, let's say a great strategy, but over here, if you have a level one and or two level students, and it will show you their names, these are additional strategies or um, scaffolds that you could put into place to support them. So it's really just so, you know, incorporates all the best practices for a variety of needs, which is what we so often see, right? Like one size doesn't fit, fit all. If it doesn't work, you might have to go in and kind of try different things like sentence frames here or, um, you know, putting their, uh, their writing on a sentence strip and maybe giving them um, phrases that they would use. So again, just great additional supports as well. So I... I'm going to go back and then at the very end, when you get through this, um, you will have a reflection and the question is now that you've taught a lesson using at least one of the activities from that previous step, you're ready to reflect on its effectiveness. And this is where you can really, you know, share how did that go? What was that like? And then once you um, go through all of those pieces, you will actually get um, a certificate of completion, which then you can take in um, and submit through my learning plan. And it'll show you the date and the credit you received. And that will be your PD for L's if you need it. Um, if you have any questions, you can always email me, Chanina Tovar, and or just reach out to your ESL teacher and they can help you as well, but they could also get you in touch with one of the coaches in the county. So good luck on your elevation journey.